Part 2. Intelligent Design. Oh, sorry, I've uh, channeled Red Letter Media there. I'm okay now. Okay. Intelligent Design is a philosophy. It is debated amongst the scientific community whether or not intelligent design it should be a science or stay regulated to philosophy. This crab is made by people. We know that. Why do we know that? Because, first of all, it says it was made in China. Well, obviously the country China didn't make it because a country is not a sentient thing. It cannot create stuff. A person or a machine in a factory made this. Somebody made the machine that made this or somebody at least operated it or observed it or something of that matter. At the end of the day, somebody is behind this existing. This didn't just form on its own accidentally. Okay. So, we know that this is intelligently designed. The design doesn't have to be perfect. It can be flawed. There's a hole in its mouth. That's kind of silly. I mean, what purpose does that serve? It's just a toy. It doesn't need to serve any purpose. I made this out of clay. It is also a crab. It's not very well designed, but it's, you see, it fell apart. But it's still designed. It's not designed as best as I could have or as somebody else might be able to. But it resembles a crab. And it's still kind of funny looking and it cute. And it gives me the giggles. To be designed, something does not have to be perfect. It simply has to be made by an intelligence to get the title intelligently designed. Well, what about people? What about the person that you're listening to? Am I intelligently designed? I don't know. It's a good question. And it is a question of philosophy because, unlike this crab, we can know for certainty that this crab was made by an intelligence. We would assume, based upon observation and data and statistics, that the intelligence that made this crab is a human, not an alien from outer space, not a time traveler, not a person from another dimension, but a human that lives or lived on this planet. If we find a watch, we're also... Uh, going to assume that it's made by a person rather than an alien. We assume that the pyramids are made by people and not aliens, but some people do think that aliens helped people in the past build the pyramids, but that's just an assumption and not one that we can really support with good theory. Everything that appears to be built or designed we can assume has been done so by people. Nature, biology, whether it be plants or animals, does not fall into this category. We cannot assume that a plant that we might find has been made by a person. We should assume that that plant has been made by another plant. This is a mudkip. A mudkip is a Pokemon. Pokemon do not exist in this real in this world as actual living creatures. They exist, but they only exist as pretend creatures. We can make things that look like them. We can put them into uh, computer games. We can make cards based off of them. And I suppose one day we could figure out enough about genetics to make something in the laboratory that would look like this thing. But it still wouldn't really be a mudkip. The idea that mudkips actually exist in the real world is ludicrous. Now, it's logically possible that on some planet, or in some other universe, or other dimension, that there are creatures that look like mudkip. 
They might even say, my kip, my kip, like he does on the show. Maybe they even squirt water from the mouth like he does on the television show Pokemon. But that is an idea of philosophy, not an idea of science. In the same way, it is an idea of philosophy that humans and plants and anything else that lives and breathes is so complex or so unique or so unexplainable that it requires an intelligence to have designed it, to have initiated it. It's a possible idea, but it is not one we can observe to be true. We have not found evidence that aliens visited the planet millions of years ago and messed about uh, with our uh, genomes to create us in the first place. We have not yet found evidence to suggest that a being higher than us has created us. Because we have not found this evidence, we cannot make any sort of scientific theory. We can make only philosophical theories. In a universe that we cannot observe, this is a living crab rather than a toy crab. In a universe that we do not observe, there is an identical debate matrix that is right now making a YouTube video about intelligent design. However, he is using a living crab rather than a toy crab. This is a philosophical possibility. I could even give good arguments to why this might be true. I could give arguments why I believe it's true or why it's possible to be true. But I could not give a scientific argument because I cannot observe it. Yes, multiple universes is currently being debated in the scientific community on whether or not that idea is science or philosophy. I think that they will probably decide that it should be regulated to philosophy because we have not yet observed any other universe than our own. Because we have not yet observed it, it does not fall into the technical terms of science. It seems more likely to fall into the technical terms of philosophy. But we have to realize that science itself is based upon a philosophy. So, we will debate such issues and ideas until we come to a conclusion that most or all people are satisfied with. It might be true that there is another universe. We don't know until we observe it. Then we can say something about it. We can start to study it. We can start to examine it, etc. But we can create theories on it, certainly. So why can't we have theories on intelligent design? Well, we can, but those theories are philosophical, not scientific. Well, why shouldn't they be scientific? That is a question that we debate, and we debate it for the same reason that we debate the question on whether or not there are multiple universes. Is it science, or is it philosophy? Is it both? It's a deep and meaningful question that needs to be examined, analyzed, and thought about, but it needs to be done so without any bias whatsoever. The problem is that as humans, we all have our biases. So it might be that this debate about intelligent design, as well as multiple universes or dimensions or whatever, is a debate that will continue for some time. My personal take is that both multiple universes and intelligent design should be regulated to philosophy for now because it is not observable, it is not yet testable. That is the essence of intelligent design. There are good arguments for it and against it. There are good arguments for multiple universes and against multiple universes, as well as alternate dimensions, aliens, etc. But those sort of arguments are philosophy and not necessarily science. 
And if we're going to argue what should or shouldn't be science, well, in my opinion, to argue such a thing, you need to have a very solid grounding and understanding of that idea. I'm not saying that you must be an expert to argue about it, but I would say that you run the risk of making an argument of ignorance if you begin to argue philosophy of science without studying the philosophy of science. At best, you'll be regulated as an amateur philosopher of science, and as an amateur, I might not really listen to you as much as I would listen to somebody that is an expert. That is my thoughts on intelligent design, and I felt that it would only be fair to follow up my video on evolution by talking about it. You see, evolution is a scientific theorem. Intelligent design is a philosophical theorem. They are compatible with each other. This crab has evolved. I know what you're saying. This crab is a toy. It hasn't evolved at all. Well, the ability to make this crab has evolved over time. In other words, if we were to go backwards in time, making this crab uh, a thousand years ago would have taken a lot longer than it does today. That is because our technology has advanced throughout time. Our ability to make these sort of toys has advanced, and making a toy like this is very easy today, whereas several years ago it would have been quite difficult. It wouldn't have been impossible, mind you. It just would have been very difficult. And one could imagine that in 20 years making a toy like this will be even easier. Why, we even have three-dimensional printers that could print out a crab like this and make it in plastic or even rubber or styrofoam or some other material. Creating objects has become easier and easier and will, we can assume, possibly become even easier in the future. It could be that one day our technology advances to a point where I press a button and this beams into existence. Molecules from surrounding uh, areas are gathered up by the machine, or maybe it, it holds uh, particles that can be used for rubber and whatnot. And it could be that one day we have such a machine. Now, uh, science fiction has uh, made those in Star Trek and called them replicators. Uh, uh, or And it's possible that we could have that technology one day. But that's something of philosophy, although it's a possibility within science. And we call it science fiction for that reason. It's not true, but one day it could be. It's possible. And it's also possible that we will acquire more information that will lead us to the understanding that life is intelligently designed. But for now, for right now, that's a philosophy and not a science. Until next time, take care. I love you! Yes, yes, that's, that's wonderful. He, he's not alive. He can't love anybody. And as far as we know, animals don't love in the way that people do it. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stop now. I guess you could say I was a little bit crabby. Ha, ha, ha.